Welcome to the chapter on ecosystems. So ecosystems is getting a little bit broader now and if we are going to define an ecosystem it's all the organisms living in a community which we just talked about in the previous chapter as well as all the abiotic factors that they're interacting with. So abiotic factors are going to be things like soil and water and temperature and those types of things. So um, ecosystem ecology is really an interesting field and when you look at it, you have to look at two different things, how energy flows through it and also how chemicals are cycling through it. And as you're going to learn at the end of this um, chapter, um, humans are doing a really good job of screwing it up. All right. So one thing that we're going to talk about a lot in this chapter is going to be trophic levels. And trophic levels you're already familiar with, um, that's going to be those levels in the food chain, right? So you've got your producers, your consumers, that type of thing. So two big kind of divisions you can do is you can separate them into the autotrophs and the heterotrophs. So the autotrophs are going to make their own energy. So it's usually going to be plants, algae, that type of thing. So we call them primary producers. Primary producers are harnessing energy from either chemicals or the sun, and they're going to create energy. So they are super important, and they're going to be the biggest part of the food chain because they make the energy budget for the food chain. Okay, everything else that's not an autotroph is going to be a heterotroph. So anytime you see the word consumer or um, detritivore, that type of thing, those are all heterotrophs. Heterotrophs depend on the autotrophs' energy to keep the whole food chain going. So we've got primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, and so on. So if we go to my PowerPoint, where is it? It's gone away. There we go. Okay. So this is going to be an example of the trophic levels. So you've got your primary producers at the bottom. Those are going to be usually photosynthetic. The primary consumers are going to be the herbivores that eat the primary producers. Then the secondary consumers eat the primary consumers. The tertiary consumers eat the secondary consumers, and so on and so on. Now, as we spoke about before, this is not super accurate because you know that different things can fit into different areas. For example, if we think about humans, we're pretty much all of these except for the bottom, right? Some people are strictly primary consumers. Those would be vegetarians. But then if you look at, um, you know, people who eat meat and eat vegetables, then they're secondary and primary, right? So you can fit in at different points, and that's, that's important to remember. The most important thing that, um, or the most overlooked thing that happens with these guys is the detritivores. So the detritivores are going to be, people say at the bottom of the food chain, they're the decomposers. Super important though, because they're eating the detritus, and what detritus actually is, is like dead stuff, a lot of the fecal matter and waste and that type of thing. But they're the ones that get all the chemicals to cycle back. So they're very, very important. And I gave you a couple points. Why? So um, they're going to be that link between the primary producers and the consumers. So when those consumers die, they need to be broken down by those detritivores to kind of bring that back into the food uh, web. Um, the other thing is that they're awesome at recycling, right? So they're the original recyclers. That's super important. And as far as what type of organisms are going to be these decomposers, it's usually going to be fungus, bacteria, worms, that type of thing. But it could be also like vultures and stuff. They're kind of in included in that too. So anything that's going to take that dead decomposing material and actually decompose it, right? Now, I remember... When I decided I wanted to be a marine biologist, I thought that when I went to school, I was going to take like dolphin training 101 and fish identification. I was like so excited. Yeah, no. My first um, like two years of school were organic chemistry 1 and 2, inorganic chemistry, physics 1 and 2, calculus 1 and 2. And I was like, what? Um, and I couldn't understand why I was learning all of that stuff until I got to those higher level courses and I started to take ecosystem ecology and I was like, oh yeah, it all does fit together. So there is a reason they make you take those crazy classes. Um, so all of those laws of physics and chemistry are going to apply and we'll talk about those when we talk about the different cycles and how they basically work. So in the next video, we'll talk more about primary production and how that works.